Introduction to Philosophies. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Craig Franklin. Philosophies by Ronald Ross. Introduction. Preface. These verses were written in India between the years 1881 and 1899, mostly during my researches on malaria. Friends who have read that part of them, which is called In Exile, complained that they could not easily follow the movement of it, and as I am now publishing the poems together with a textbook on malaria, and also because I desire very strongly to rid my mind of this subject which has occupied it for twenty years, I take the opportunity to give such explanation of the work as I can find expression for. In 1881, I joined the Military Medical Service of India, and was called upon to serve during the next seven years in Madras, Bangalore, Burma, and the Andaman Islands. Having abundant leisure, I occupied most of it in the study of various sciences and arts, in all of which I attempted some works to the best of my ability. For this I make no excuse to my conscience, since to my mind art and science are the same, and efforts in both, however poor the results may be, are to be commended more than idleness. Near the end of the seven years, however, I began to be drawn towards certain thoughts which from the first had occurred to me in my profession, especially as to the cause of the widespread sickness and of the great misery and decadence of the people of India. Racked by poverty, swept by epidemics, housed in hovels, ruled by superstitions, they presented the spectacle of an ancient civilization fallen for centuries into decay. One saw there both physical and mental degeneration. Since the time of the early mathematicians, science had died, and since that of the great temples, art had become ornament and religion dogma here was the living picture of the fate which destroyed greece rome and spain and i saw in it the work of nay science the opposition of science returning to britain in eighteen eighty eight i qualified myself for pathological researches and about eighteen ninety or eighteen ninety one entered upon a careful study of malarial fever in the hope of finding out accurately how it is caused and may be prevented on august the twentieth eighteen ninety seven i was fortunate enough to find the clue to the problem which i believe would not have been discovered but for such good fortune and the next year i ascertained the principal facts which i had been in search of these poems are the notes of the wayside as for in exile i do not remember the date but it was early in the course of the labour, when my thoughts began to shape themselves into a kind of sonnet of three short stanzas. It was a pleasure and relief after the day's work to mould them thus, for each set of stanzas required a different balance and structure within its narrow limits, and was, so to speak, inscribed on small squares of stone to be put away and arranged thereafter. Later, when my researches had attained to success, a sudden disastrous interpretation of them compelled me to set aside the verses also, and it was not until nine years afterwards that I found time to arrange them for rough printing. They were then put nearly in the order of writing, some fragments being finished but most omitted. I have blamed myself for this, because the omissions give to the whole a more sombre cast than is natural to me or than I had intended. But now I judge I was right in it. The poem, such as it is, is not a diary in verse, but rather the figure of a work and of a philosophy. I find I cannot rise with those who would soar above reason in the chase of something supernal. Infinities and absolutes are still beyond us, though we may hope to come nearer to them some day by the patient study of little things. Our first duty is the opposite of that which many prophets enjoin upon us, or so I think. 
we must not accept any speculations merely because they now appear pleasant flattering or ennobling to us we must be content to creep upwards step by step planting each foot on the firmest finding of the moment using the compass and such other instruments as we have observing without either despair or contempt the clouds and precipices above and beneath us especially our duty at present is to better our present foothold to investigate to comprehend the forces of nature to set our state rationally in order to stamp down disease in body mind and government to lighten the monstrous misery of our fellows not by windy dogmas but by calm science the sufferings of the world are due to this that we despise those plain earthly teachers reason work and discipline lost in many speculations we leave our house disordered unkept and dirty we indulge too much in dreams in politics which organize not prosperity but contention in philosophies which expressly teach irrationalism fakerism and nay science the poor faker seated begging by the roadside with his visions and his sores such is man an old philosophy this like the opposite one the poem gathers itself under it and attempts to use the great symbols of that wonderful land the drought the doubt the pains of self the arid labour the horrors of whole nations diseased the crime of nescience parodying god's words and the victory of his thunder and rain the dated stanzas near the end except the two lines of the second quatrain were written the day after the rediscovery of the parasites of malaria in mosquitoes there are some repetitions and i fear worse faults but it is too late to mend them i am much indebted to mr john macefield and mrs macefield for assisting me in the correction of the proofs the author december the second nineteen o nine End of preface. This recording is in the public domain. India by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. India. Here from my lonely watchtower of the east, an ancient race outworn I see, with dread my own dear distant country, lest the same fate fall on thee. Lo, here the iron winter of cursed caste has made men into things that creep, the leprous beggars totter trembling past, the baser sultans sleep not for a thousand years has freedom's cry the stillness of this horror cleaved but as of old the hopeless millions die that yet have never lived man has no leisure but to snatch and eat who should have been a god on earth the lean ones cry the fat ones curse and beat and wealth but weakens worth o oh, heaven shall man rebelling never take from fate what she denies his bliss cannot the mind that made the engine make a nobler life than this end of poem madras 1881 this recording is in the public domain Thought by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Thought. Spirit of thought, not thine the songs that flow to fill with love or lull Italian hours. Thou wert not nurtured mid the marish flowers, or where the nightshade blooms or lilies blow, but on the mountains from those keeps of snow, thou seest the heavens and earth and marts and towers of teeming men 
the battle smoke that lures above the nations where they strive below the gleam of golden cohorts and the cloud of shrieking peoples yielding to the brink the gleam the gold the agony the rage the civic virtue of a race unbowed the reeling empire lost in license sink and chattering pygmies of a later age end of poem this recording is in the public domain science by ronald ross read for librivox .org by craig franklin science i would rejoice in iron arms with those who nobly in the scorn of recompense have dared to follow truth alone and thence to teach the truth nor feared the rage that rose no high-piled monuments are theirs who chose her great inglorious toil no flaming death to them was sweet the poetry of prose but wisdom gave a fragrance to their breath alas we sleep and snore beyond the night though these great men the dreamless daylight show but they endure the sons of simple light and with no lying lanthorn's antic glow reveal the open way that we must go end of poem this recording is in the public domain power by ronald ross read for librivox .org by craig franklin power caligula pacing through his pillared hall ere yet the last dull glimmer of his mind had faded in the banquet where reclined he spent all day in drunken festival made in pious pretence that jove with him unseen walked talked and jested for he spoke to nothing by his side or frowned or broke in answering smiles or shook a playful rim of raiment coyly earth he said is mine no vapour yet caligula brother jove will love thee if he find thee worthy love if not his solid power shall war with thine and break them god of cloud the courtiers round as in the presence of two deities bent in servile scorn when like a warning sent an utterance of earthquake shook the ground awful but which no human meaning bore with glaring eyeballs narrowing in dismay the huddled creature fallen foaming lay glassed in the liquid marbles of the floor end of poem this recording is in the public domain Dogma by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew Ryan Ross Dogma To a poor martyr perished in the flame, Lo, suddenly the cool and calm of heaven, And one who gently touched and tended came, For thee, O Lord, he cried, my life was given. When thus the pitiful one, O suffering man, I taught thee not to die, but how to live, but ye have wrongly read the simple plan, And turned to strife the heavenly gift I give. I taught the faith of works, the prayer of deeds, The sacrament of love I gave, not awe but praise, No church but gods, no form, no creeds, No priest but conscience, and no lord but law. Behold, my brother, by my side in heaven, Judas abhorred by men, and Nero next, how then, if such as these may be forgiven, shall one be damned who stumbles at a text? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Froth by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Froth. This bubbling gossip here of fops and fools, Who have no care beyond the coming chance, Rough rubs the angry soul to arrogance, And puts puffed wisdom out of her own rules. True, knowledge comes on all winds without schools, 
and every folly has her saw perchance some costly gem from silius spotomance may be unashed and mind has many tools but still love here reigns not her heavenly dew nor friendship sues the folly fretted sense but pride and ignorance the empty two strut arm in arm to air their consequence and toil bleeds tears of gold for idle opulence end a poem this recording is in the public domain liberty by ronald ross read for LibriVox.org by Alemi. when cassius fell and brutus died resentful liberty arose where from aloft the mountain snows she watched the battle's breaking tide and as she rent her azure robe darkness descended o'er the globe break never night she cried nor bring before i come again the morn with all her heavenly light for scorn of this base world so slumbering where men for thrice five hundred years their sin shall mourn and me in tears end of poem this recording is in the public domain the three angels by ronald ross read for librivox.org by jamie kravitz san francisco california heaven vexed in heaven heard the world and all the grief thereof and sent the angel's strength swift he unfurled his wings and flashed his sword and went but still the cry of earth rang to the firmament then gentle love most loved in heaven heaven sent to earth his large eyes shone upcast with glory from god given and darkening downward from the throne he fell nor baited yet the far terrestrial moan then all the host of heaven amazed cried next let wisdom go and prove himself and conquer but he raised his face and answered heaven above like them alone i fail send me with strength and love eighteen eighty two end of poem this recording is in the public domain return by ronald ross Read for LibriVox.org by Jamie Kravitz, San Francisco, California. Return Muse, in my boyhood's careless days, my reverence for thee was not small, although I roamed by star and sea, and left thee, seeking other ways. I left thee, for I knew that all returned by sea and star to thee. Not worthy he to hear thy song, him thou thyself despisest most, who dares not leave thee and arise to face the world's discordant throng, since thou art best gained by being lost, and earth is in thy heavenly eyes. 1886-87 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Star and the Sun by Ronald Ross, read for LibriVox.org, by Arav Agarwal. The Star and the Sun In darkness, and placing the thunder-beat shore by many waves, no sound being near to me there but the hoarse cicala's cry, while that unseen sword, the zodiacal light, falcon of dawn, made clear all the orient, waning the silvery stars i heard the fine flute of the fast fading fire the morning star pipe thus to the glimmering glories of night and sing o world if i too must leave thee then who can remain but lo from the deep the thundering sun upsprang and responded i andamans End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The World's Inheritors by Ronald Ross, read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal. The World's Inheritors God gazing down from heaven saw the world, mighty, himself a heaven, he filled the heavens. His beard fell like a wasted thunder at eve, and all his robe was woven with white stars, and on his breast a star. The world was dark, deep in a forest there, where not the rill that routed in the wood dared break the silence, nor one murmur of night. Wound to the stagnant, chill, and listening air, five children slumbering lay, one ruddy as the red grapes of the south, one duskier, breather of a more burning air, one blue-eyed, blonde, and golden-crowned with locks, one finely fashioned in an even mold, and one hard wroth as steel. Lord of the woods their sire, enormous, rough, hair tangled like the north bear, but his mate, queen of a myriad palaces that shone, with chalcedon and jasper, justly wrought, and gems of jeweled stone who when he saw her won her, loved her well, by her abhorred, and so he slew her then, and gazed upon her beauty dead, and died himself, lamenting his wild woods, and these their wondrous offspring were. Europe, A.D. 500. The world beheld them, and adored, adored, and feared, and sought to slay them, for the battle brood of gods is battle born. But they endeared, nor in the thunder found harm, or the bolt of death. And God looked down and spake, and through the earth. The murmur ran, terranean like the shock, when central earthquakes jar, until the deep foams tingling to the ice poles, and said, To these I give the world. Andamans, 1886-7 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Death Song of Savagery by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Arav Agarwal Death Song of Savagery I have heard it, I have heard the forest Strive to bring me comfort, and the ocean Roll large-tongued consolation round me I have heard the weakling wild birds crying And the wailing winds proclaim me brother I have heard these things, and yet I perish from the flowers, the myriad mouths of forest, honeyed words have come, and from the billows, bursting, issue of sweet cheering voices. In this midnight and moon-glamoured darkness, winds and wild birds crying give me pity. But, although I hear them, lo, I perish, for a mighty voice rolls through my spirit, crying, as thou wert, so art, and shall be, ever and forever and forever. Son of midnight and moon-glamoured darkness, Rayless, lightless, and thy one star faded, Child of night and ocean, till thou perish. Andamans, 1886-7 Epilogue to the author's romance, The Child of Ocean End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ocean and the Dead by Ronald Ross, read for LibriVox.org, by Rav Agarwal. Ocean and the dead, the dead, dost dare to rouse us from our sleep, eternal given of God, O deep? Ocean, a thunder on your bones, in life you wage with me your pygmy strife. The dead, living, but humble mariners we, dead, ocean, what are we to thee? Ocean, you hope to find within your graves Eternal refuge from my waves. The dead, living, we faced thee full of fears, Dying, thy roar was in our ears. Ocean, dead, I will break your bones forever. Man may forgive, but nature never. Andamans, 1886-7 to seven. In 1740, the cemeteries of Dunwich were laid bare by the sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ocean and the Rock by Ronald Ross 
Read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal. Ocean and the Rock The Rock Seas, O rude and raging sea, Thus to waste thy war on me. Has thou not enough assailed, All these ages fool and failed? Ocean Gaunt and ghastly skeleton, Remnant of a time that's gone, Tottering in thy last decay, Durst thou still to darken day? The rock. Empty brawler, brawl no more, Cease to waste thy watery war, On my bastioned bases broad, Sanctified by time and God. Ocean. Thou that beast but to me, Scornest thou my energy? Not much longer lasts the strife, I am labor, I am life. The rock. Roar, then, roar, and vent thy surge. Thou not know shalt drone my dirge. Dost imagine to dismay this my iron beast with spray? Ocean, relic of primeval slime, I shall whelm thee in my time. Changeless thou dost ever die, changing but immortal I. Andamans, 1886 to 7. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Brothers by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Brothers Beneath Socotra and before The mariner makes the Libyan shore O'er him the doubtful cape beguiles Black in the night to dreadful isles by Allah chained to ocean's bed, Each shows above an awful head. And front to front, envisaged, Frown to frown retorts, By loud renown the brothers. But no love between, Though bound, they nurse a mutual spleen. And, when the thundering waves engage, In battle, vent immortal rage. Dot say, Ho, through the midnight learn my hate, When God releases, then thy fate. Samhe, when God unbinds thy fettered feet, For mercy him, not me entreat. Dot say, Dost think, because thy head is high, That thou art more divine than I? Samhe, because thy looks are earthward given, Thou hatest one who looks to heaven. Dot say, Because thou gazest at the sun, Think'st thou thou art the nobler one? Samhe, For them who with the stars converse, There is no better and no worse. Dot say, So, hold thy old philosophy, truth in the world enough for me for humble truth was born on earth but lies forsooth have better birth samhe i watch the white stars rise and fall i hear the vanished eagles call for me the world is but a sod i strive to see the eyes of god 1888 the islands about which this legend is told are known as Jezirat Datse and Jezirat Same, east of Cape Garafui, one high and the other low. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Alistair by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by nemo alistair tis said that a noble youth of old was to his native village lost and to his home an aged sire for he had wandered it is told where pinnacled in eternal frost apollo leads his awful choir awful for not of human warms the agony of their song sublime which like the breath of ice is given ascending in vapour from all forms 
where gods in clear alternate chime reveal their mystery thoughts to heaven nor in those regions of windless cold is fiery the sun though fierce in light but frozen pale the numbed moon wanders along the ridges that fold enormous peaks what time the night rivals with all her stars the noon for there not dimly is here the stars but globed in azure and crimson tinct climb up the windless waste of snow gold-footed or through the long-drawn bars of mountain mist with eyes unblinked in scorn gaze down on the world below or high on the topmost peak and end of ranges stand with sudden blaze like angels born in spontaneous birth or wrap themselves in flame and descend between black foreheads of rock and haze slowly like grieved gods to earth and there forever the patient wind breaks up the crystals of dry snow and mourns forever her work undone and there forever like titans blind their countenance lifting to heaven's glow the sightless mountains yearn for the sun there nightly the numbed eagle quells full feathered to his feet of horn his swooning eye his eerie one and slumbers frozen by frosty spells fast to the pinnacle but at morn unfettered leaps toward the sun he heard he saw not to the air dared breathe a breath but with his sight wrecked on a mortal's mortal wrong and dared to see them as they were the black peaks blackened in their light the white stars flashing with their song so fled but when revealing morn showed him descended giant grown men ant-like petty mean and weak he rushed returning then in scorn the immortal smote him to a stone that aches for ever on the peak and a poem this recording is in the public domain Sonnet by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Sonnet High muse, who first, where to my opening sight, Newborn, the loftiest summits of the world, Silent, with brows of ice and robes unfurled, Of motionless thunder, shone above the night. Didst touch my infant eyes and fill with light, of snow and sleepless stars and torrents hurled and fragrant pines of morning mist impearled and music of great things and their delight revisit me resume my soul inspire with force and cold out of the north not given to sickly dwellers in these southern spots where all day long the great sun rolls his fire intolerable in the dusty march of heaven and the heart shrivels and the spirit rots madras 1890 and a poem this recording is in the public domain vision by ronald ross read for LibriVox.org by nemo vision a valley of far-fallen rocks like bones of mouldering mountains spread and ended by the barren blocks of mountains doomed or dead no rivage there with green recess made music in that wilderness despairing fell the sore spent sun and cried i die and sank in fire like conquering death the night came on and ran from spire to spire and swollen pale ascended soon like death in life the leprous moon on windy ledges lined with light between the still stars sparsely strewn 
Two spirits grew from out the night beneath the mistless moon, and held deep parley, making thought with words sententious, half distraught. One full robed in his hand a book, his lips that labored for the word, scarce moved in utterance, and his look sought not his face who heard but that sad star that sobs alway upon the breast of dying day one weary with two-handed stress leant on his shoulder touching spear his beard blown o'er the hairiness of his great breast and clear his eyes shot speculation out to catch the truth or quell the doubt one the dreams of hope of blue-eyed hope melt after morn and dying day love's golden dew-globe lit a slope dulls with a downward ray canst thou with all thy thought renew the flying dreams of drying dew two not i creator hour by hour i labor without stress or strife to gain more knowledge greater power a nobler longer life by thought alone we take our stand above the world and win command one no knowledge doth but clip our wings and worldly wisdom weak in worth to make us lords of little things and worm gods of the earth were earth made heaven by human wit some wild star yet might shatter it two the wings of fancy are but frail and virtues without wisdom weak better than falsehood's flowery veil the truth however bleak though she may bless not nor redeem the truth is true and reigns supreme one not all but few can plead and prove and crown their brows with truth and pass their little labors cannot move the mountain's mighty mass to man in vain the truth appeals or heaven ordains or art reveals two so self-consuming thought but see the standards of advance unfurled the buds are breaking on the lee and spring strikes through the world though we may never reach the peak god gave this great commandment seek the ponderous bolts of night were drawn the pale day peered through cloudy bars the wind awoke the sword of dawn flashed through the flying stars the new-born sun-star smote the gloom the desert burst in endless bloom bangalore eighteen ninety and a poem this recording is in the public domain Thought and Action by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Yan Yan Zen The angel of the left hand spake. His speech fell as when on some shuddering arctic beach. The icy northern creeps from reach to reach and curdles motion and with thrilling spell fixes the falling ripple peace and quell he said the action not matured well what scorn to build with labor round on round and lay the costly marbles when tis found the whole design at last inapt unsound beware the bitter moment when awake we view the mischief that our visions make the good things broken in a mad mistake but rather use the thought that is divine and know that every moment of design will save an hour of action point for line and leave to others loss or victory and like the stars of heaven seek to be the wise man's compass but beyond the sea then he upon the right his words came forth like the four sudden blowing to the north the time is come he said 
to try the wood. For when thoughts wasted candles wane and wink, and meditations like the planets sink, the sun of action rushes from the brink. Stand not forever in the towers of thought, to watch the watery dawning waste to naught. The distant stars deluding darkness brought, not timorous weak persuasion, but the brand of action, not discussion, but command, can rouse the ranks of God and storm the land. Where men who know the day still doze again, not wars of dust condemn the outrageous main, nor mitigation seize the world and reign. Fear not, unsheath the naked falchion, try the end, for in the end, who dares deny the utter truth shall slay the utter lie. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bangalore. March 1890
the star by ronald ross read for LibriVox.org, by queen tiffany rose the star far across the lone land far across the sea far across the sands o silver shining sister of the silence sister of the dew sister of the twilight light in me ever art thou beaming i with eyes upcast gazing worn and weary from this dark world ask of thee thy wisdom steadfast eye of god that i be as thou art while i last end of poem this recording is in the public domain Petition by Ronald Ross, read for LibriVox.org by Caitlin S. Petition, Truth, whom I hold divine, thy wings are strong to bear through day or desperate night, for ever those eyes of thine, fixed upward full of prayer, are seeking for the light. Guide me and bear, descend into the sulphurous void, though I so weak, thy wings stronger than him who, Pent in hell unmerited, void poets past infernal springs. Take me and bear, descend into these deeps of death, wherever the light may lead, wherever the way may wend, and give to my failing breath, O spirit, thy words of deed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Desert by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Desert. One. This prophet yet remains of exile and the hour that life in losing gains, perhaps a fuller flower. Not less the pruned shoot, not less the barren year, which yields the perfect fruit which makes the meaning clear. For on this desert soil a blessing comes unsought, space for a single toil, time for a single thought. When in distractions tossed, since oft distractions claim, for moments never lost, of each its higher aim. We live, we learn the wealth, the joyous hours may bring, but jealous time by stealth puts all of it to wing. Pursuing empty arts, we gain no noble goal, and lose in learning parts the grandeur of the whole. If patience, pouring tears, she cannot but lament the long, unfruitful years of exile idly spent have patience she will find they were not all in vain but each has left behind a little store of gain a wider wisdom bought with labor problem solved the themes of inner thought more thoroughly revolved so one who entertained the prosperous of the earth no good from any gained, but lost his wealth and worth. In wrath he gathered round the indigent and old. Each wretch, amazed, he found, had left a gift of gold. So one who sought a land where all the earth is ore, but had he sifted sand, he would have gathered more. 2. The sun arose and took the lofty heavens of right. From out of the heavens he shook the pestilence of his light. He paced upon his path, and from his right hand hurled the javelins of his wrath contemptuous of the world. Before his scornful lips the forest fell down dead, and scowling in eclipse disbanding thunders fled 
He fills the hills with fire and blast the barren plain. He hath stripped the stricken briar and slain the thorn again. He cracks the rocks and cakes the quagmires into crust and slays the snake and makes the dead leaf writhe in dust. He halts in heaven halfway and blackens earth with light and the dark doom of day lies on us like the night. A land of clamorous cries, of everlasting light, of noises in the skies and noises in the night. There is no night. The sun lives through the night again. The image of the sun is burnt upon the brain. O oh God, he still returns. He slays us in the dust. The brazen death star burns and stamps us into dust. Three. The air is thunder still. What motion is with us? Deep shocks of thunder fill the deep sky ruin us. As if down lumbering large upon these desert tracks he had fallen about the marge in cloudy cataracts and spot by spot in dust the writhing raindrops lie and turn like blood to rust writhe redden shrink and dry a land where all day long day long descanting dirge the heavy thunders hang and moan upon the verge where all day long the kite her queerless question cries and circles lost in light about the yellow skies and thou o heart art hushed in the deep dead of day half restless and half crushed half soaring to away Day long the queerless kite, her queerless question cries, and sails a spot of night about the vasty skies. The puffed cheeks of typhoons blow through the worthless clouds that roll in writhing moons in skies of many moods. None fruitful, and the clouds take up the dust and dance a dance of death and shrouds, mock, mow, retire, advance. 4. Where is the rain? We hear the footsteps of the rain, walking in dust and, near, dull thunders over the plain. Cloud, dust, the wind awakes, the base dust we have trod smokes up to heaven and takes the thunderings of God. No rain. The angry dust cries out against the rain. The clouds are backward thrust, the monstrous sun again. We hope the rain would fall after the dreadful day, for we heard the thunders call each other far away. We hope for rain, because after thunder rain is given, and yet it only was the mockery of heaven. He is the Lord of us, he will unconquered sink, red but victorious, and smoking to the brink. Shout, barren thunders, shout and rattle and melt again. So fall the fates about, so melt the hopes of men. Rattle aloft and wake the sleepers on the roofs, wild steeds of heaven, and shake heaven with your echoing hoofs. Awake the weary at night until the cry, the rain, then take to temptuous flight and melt into air again. 5. 
This is the land of death. The sun, his taper, is wherewith he numbereth the dead bones that are his. He walks besides the deep and counts the mouldering bones in lands of tumbling steep and cataracts of stones. About his feet the host of dead leaves he hath slain awaken, shrieking ghost demanding life again. O silent sepulcher, great east disastrous climb, O grave of things that were, O catacombs of time, O silent catacombs, O bleared memorial stones, where laughing in the tombs death plays with mouldering bones. And through dead bones the stalk of the living herb is thrust, and we, the living, walk in waste of human dust. Dust, thou art dust, thy son, thy lord and lord of dust, doth stamp thee into one great plain of dust and dust. Thy heavens, thy nights, thy days, thy temples and thy creeds, thy crumbling palaces, thy far-forgotten deeds, infinite dust. Half-living, we clothe ourselves in dust and live, not to be living, but because we must. Thy winds are full of death, death comes we know not whence, thy forests have a breath of secret pestilence. Thy rivers rolling large are blessed with no sweet green, but silent at the marge the waiting monsters seen. No scented silence, Eve, but night a noisy gloom, and we, thy captives, live the derelicts of doom. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vox Clementis by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Vox Clementis. One. Long, long the barren years. Long, long, O oh God. Hast thou appointed for our tears this term of exile, lo? Life is but nothing thus, old friendships perished, not hand in hand with us, the dying father dead. Narrowed the mind that should through all experience range and grow in solitude unheard the wheels of change. When sadly numbering the wasted golden hours, our fate hath put to wing that had perchance been ours. To have seen, to have known, to have trod, about from pole to girth, this heritage of God, this wondrous sculptured earth. Seeing that never again the usurer time gives back, how should we not complain this present barren black? We said we must not mourn, the end is always good, while well past the pain well borne, but sorrow in her mood, would not be comforted, and cried, I know the truth, where are the distant dead, and where the wasted youth? Let wisdom take her ground, and hope do what she can, ill heals the dreadful wound that severs half a man. Sorrow, not so beguiled, would take my hand and lead, but waiting wisdom smiled and took my hand instead, and answered, Well, I read, the shackled win the goal, the body's strengthener need and sorrow of the soul. But mine the part be given to guide and hers to follow, and so went through to heaven, and sorrow said, I follow. Two. To sadness and to self, 
we should not enter in sadness the shadow of self and self the shadow of sin unless because the whole of human life appears clear only when the soul is darkened through with tears the day too full of light with light her own light mars but in the shading night the shining host of stars that leaving manhood men should kiss the hands of grief and loving but the wen the wart the withered leaf amass a horde of husk when joy is in the corn nor ever evening dusk without the tints of morn in forms with doubt if good be or omnipotent since in the brightest blood this idle discontent joy jester at herself and happiness of woe if self at peace with self know not when shall we know so one a prosperous man nightly the people fill his toast and what he can is only what he will they shout his name is wed with thunders torches flare tossed in a wretched bed he chews a trifling care three one says in scorn the strife to live well keeps us well and tis the unworthy life that makes the prison cell and one an angel stood on sands of withering heat the flowerless solitude grew green beneath his feet a third many would leaf endure thy solitude as else ascribe thy grief to poison in the blood and i o soul content yet in thine exile dwell and live up to thy bent not more than well is well but take the sports divine the largest of the earth wind drinking steeds be thine and bloused chase the mirth of those who wisely draw their lives in nature's vein and live in the large law of slaying or be slain or learn by looking round lift up thine eyes avow the gardener of thy ground doth worthier work than thou from his poor cot he wends at early break of day his pretty charges tends in his unskilful way much wearied with his toil he labors through the hours and pours upon the soil refreshment for his flowers though bent with age to stoop to him no rest is given but the heads of those that droop he raises up to heaven half ready for the grave his weakness he forgets more scrupulous to save the breath of violets but at the evening hour when he shall seek repose the voice of every flower will bless him as he goes end a poem this recording is in the public domain self sorrows by ronald ross read for labourfox dot org by kathleen one these stones that idly make an idle land and lie fantastic forms or break down crumbling hills not high in arid cataracts where meagre cattle stray to search the meagre tracks of bitter grass for i they move not live not lie dull eyes that watch the world and exiles asking why god brought them here or hurled we would we could have torn this winding web of fate which round us barely born hath brought us to this state of being cast away among these tombs the river of life here day by day runs downward slower ever into black washes true yet holds our destiny to live a year or two look round us once and die if we should try to trace in portions line by line the beauty of a face to know why thus divine 
seeing but many curves we miss the inner soul and find no part deserves that merit of the whole and so to analyze thy mournful spirit vain o exile but our sighs suffice to prove the pain to grow from much to more in knowledge and to put a power to every power a foot before a foot toward that goal of good that glimmers through the night above the time and mood a star of constant light at last to meet the dark the goal not reached indeed but full of hours and work are exile not thy creed and less to leap to catch the spinning spokes of change in our brief life to snatch all aspects and to range full face with every view to sit with those who toil great spirits toiling too still less to fan or foil those fires that rushing fast through all the people's life break roaring round the past in renovating strife if in the energetic west man ever grows more large like ocean without rest exploring at the marge here lower yet he turns for ever downward thrust the baleful sun-god burns and breaks him into dust or like his native plains where nothing new appears or hath appeared remains unchanged a thousand years two though sorrows darkly veiled at all men's tables nor the guests make question paled nor children hush before those presents of grief sit yet to all men do do rights the sweet relief of home the friendship true the dying word to feel their country in their keep to heave along the wheel and push against the steep but in this wilderness wed to a rock or two what joys have we to bless far far our friends and few and thou o oh happy land we dream of thee in vain one moment see then stand within this waste again the great earth in her zones matureth day by day but we like waiting stones no time but by decay grief hath a shadow shame and manhood meanly tossed in woes without a name and sorrows that are lost looked at when in the streets true sorrow sealed with sores and wrapped in rags entreats a charity from ours manhood can best control but this dark exile hath worse wounds and of the soul a misery and a wrath end of poem this recording is in the public domain Exile by Ronald Ross, read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. One, happy the man who ploughs all day his native croft. He looks to heaven and knows, smiling, the lark aloft. Happy the man whose toil leads on laborious hills, the rock beneath the soil, the measure of his ills. Happiest, who can go forth through every age and clime, his home the whole of earth, his heritage all time in vasty wilds and with no crimson petals pranked the shallow briars breathe and bloom and die unthanked and we the useless briar and round us deserts spread the sun rolls his fire and smites the desert dead death silence and the star with scornful nostrils curled and half forgotten far the movements of the world too one hour released i rushed about the world again the living thousands crushed the streets were full of rain i felt the north wind sting and gloried in the sleet i heard my footsteps ring along the frosty street and saw less seen than felt swift flashing italy and that bright city built upon the mirroring sea three my country my england home are thy flowers bright thy bells ringing the spring welcome the winter long farewells are thy fields fair each flower filled with heavenly dew my country 
at this hour when i am thinking of you art thou so far so fair across what leagues of foam my country art thou still there my england my country my home for this hateful desert land is pent by a great sea that booms upon the strand for ever salt the sea and salt the shore the thorn and cactus stand and gaze upon these waves new-born the young grass ends her days straightly the beach is lined i wander to the shore the sunset dies behind the full moon springs before of these great deeps that link the land i love with this i wander to the brink i watch the waters kiss this lonely shore o oh, waves o oh, winds and waters where my country sing o oh, waves and tell me of it here o oh, night o oh, moon that comest a sad face fronting mine o oh, dusking deep that boomest what tidings of it thine five o oh, homeland at this hour what joys are thine this moon what lovers in what bower sees and what jocund tune from smoky villages is heard what homely light shines welcome through the trees what watchdog barks delight what lingering linnet flings her good night in the air what honeysuckle rings her chime of fragrance there one moment and i see the cot the lane the light the moon behind the tree the evening turn to night one moment know the scent of smoke of fragrant fires and hear the cattle pent within the wattled byres one moment and i wake the vision fades and falls these lifeless deserts make me adamantine walls end of poem this recording is in the public domain soul scorn by ronald ross read for laborbox.org by kathleen no cloak of cloudy rack the mistless mystery mars but all the desert is black beneath the quivering stars i hear the pinions creak of night birds beating by and lost hyenas shriek unto the spectral sky the stars immortal sons of god are full of fire but we rejected ones know heaven but in desire my soul said art thou dead the chasm of night is riven what dost thou see i said the full-fired fires of heaven look not but see he said i said i know not whether they are the hosts of god clashing their spears together so bright the stars appear their splendor smokes in heaven i think indeed i hear their distant voices even he said see not but know i said i cannot see i think perhaps they go to some great victory he said for ever they go still onward on and on and that is why they know the victory's clarion i said i am too weak to do more than i must he said then cease to seek and perish in the dust end of poem this recording is in the public domain resolve by ronald ross read for liberbox dot org by kathleen bound in misfortune's bands blindfold and brought to naught i would reach out my hands and touch eternal thought i cannot choose but try behind these prison bars to measure earth and sky and know the whole of stars and what i read i write vain visions as they rise vain visions of the night unworthy others eyes i said though dungeoned here in these deep dens of night my soul shall persevere to seek supernal light untainted truth to know from that fair face of lies whose heavenly features glow like truths save in the eyes till after all these years the wisdom come on sought to see the stars as spheres and sound the bounds of thought end of poem this recording is in the public domain Desert Thoughts by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Molly Lynn I hold with them who see, nor only idly stand, The deed of thought to be worth many deeds of hand. 
ever as we journey sink the old behind the new, and heaven commands, we think, as justly as we do. One golden virtue more than virtue we must prize, one iron duty more than duty to be wise. Who to himself hath said, This chamber must be closed, This tract of truth I dread, This darkness God imposed, May not be lifted, Keeps an ever open door, Through which deception creeps, Confounding more and more, Until to wild extremes Of falsehood driven he dies, Intoxicate with dreams and drunk with a thousand lies. And more if he have taken a secret lie for a friend, he shall be found forsaken, and terrible his end. So one doth travelling ride, a dreadful forest fears, rejoiced at length a guide, he meeteth unawares. With thunder overthrown, day dies in solitude, the guide, a monster grown, devours him in the wood, idle and base the cry. If it be so, so be it, but if it be so, then I will look not lest I see it, or this. If it be so, we lose this thing or that, t'were better not to know. The lightning spareth not. The timorous soul who hides his head in danger thus, the iron fact abides, things were not made for us. Who answers? Who repines? Not he who works in love, but he who thinks divines the things he cannot prove. He takes his stand and rolls the phrase he hopes for heaven, but cheats the hungry souls and gives them bread of leaven. His ears are filled with wax, his bandaged eyeballs blind, and yet no doubts perplex, and he can see no wind. Though all in science good, by incessant question found, beyond it strayed we brood, and argue round and round. And where we hoped the end, such distance we have come, amazed we only find the point we started from. In fancies, like the breath, we utter, do not prove, a cloud above, beneath, to fog us as we move. We climb from cloud to cloud, the airy precipice. Fain would we reach to God? We fall through the abyss. The vapors will not bear. Wild clutching, we are hurled, Throw measurements of air again upon the world. Clear rings the answer high. The mystery make itself. The mystery is a lie. Be cleansed and know thyself. If with unshaken will, resolving not to stray, but to be rising still, we clamber day by day. From truth to truth at last, in valleys of the night, not lost, we know the vast and simple upper light. Only one laboring knows the base tumultuous wreck of rock and forest shows the summit a single peak. So sought, so seen, so found. And what the end so high? A summit splendor crowned between the earth and sky where with sidereal blaze the mistless planets glow, and stars unusually gaze on unpolluted snow. No strife the vast reveals, but perfect peace indeed, the thunder of spinning wheels at rest in eternal speed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Gains of Time by Robert Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Molly Lynn Lulled in the lap of home, 
full fed with fruits of time, ripened on labored loam by others since the prime. In great, we give no thought to all these golden things the toiling past hath brought, the toiling present brings. But on this silent shore and waste barbarian, we hear the engines roar, the mind, the might of man. So one in savage lands, he enters all alone, no weapon in his hands, the secret spears unthrown. The creepers lose their guile, seeing his face distressed, they know not why. A smile, a sign or two, a jest. And all on bended knees withhold the savage stroke. With beating heart he sees the lessening steamer smoke. He draws a power to be from powers sacrificed, and in his eyes we see the teaching of the Christ. And all the great beside the oracles of time from Delphic clefts have cried or crashed in thundering rhyme. A book his finger parts. He moves through adverse cries, master of many arts and careless of the skies. What are thy mighty deeds, O past, thy gains, O time? A dust of ruined creeds, a scroll or two, of rhyme? A temple earthquake dashed, a false record of things, a picture lightning flashed, of cruel eyes of kings. Know these, a wiser rule, a science of ampler span, a heart more pitiful, more mind, a nobler man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Invocation by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Molly Lynn. Invocation, Part One. Thee most we honor, thee, great science. Hold thy way. The end thou canst not see, but in the end the day. Seek without seeking ends, and shatter without ruth. On thee our fate depends. Be faithful. Keep the truth. We think it false to dream beyond the likely fact. We grant thee truth, supreme, whatever thou exact. I pray thee, truth, control, my destiny distraught and move my sightless soul in thy highways of thought. Hold thou my hand, I go wherever thou wilt guide, though bleak the bitter snow and black the mountainside. Or if thou bidst descend, I fear not for myself, though raging thunders rend and lightnings lash the gulf. My deeds I will endow, my spirit render clean, O truth with thee, and thou wilt make the desert green, and haply show withal the wells that will not sink, sweet pastures for the soul, and in the desert drink. Confounded by these briars, thy stars will compass me, and be the beacon fires to light mine eyes to thee. Part two. But in my state infirm, that spirit comes and cries to me in wrath. O oh, worm, thee see not who have eyes. How thou that hast not. No, my children, drink the sun, taking them wings to go where others walk or run. Yet scarcely one life taught can ever rightly heed the issue of a thought or do a fruitful deed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Despairs by Ronald Ross 
Read for LibriVox.org by Molly Lynn. Despairs. Part One. I call no curse on fate. I call no curse on thee, O barren, bitter state, of exile, such to me. I would but only this. I wish that I could go, and see the thing that is, and seen, better know, and take things in my hand, and find if false or fit. But in this far-off land, what hope is there of it? There is no hope of it, I see but sad despair, unless it may be writ, God cureth care by care. So one in prison thrust, he ages span by span, but in the prison dust becomes a better man. So one is blind from birth, all day he sitteth still. He cannot see the earth, but heaven, when he will. Part Two I thought that I might rise, and looking to the stars, lift up my blinded eyes, and bless God unawares. In words whose merit this, poor buds of blighting air, to know no loveliness, but breath, the scent of prayer. Since heaven hath decreed, who suffers lives with God. And he who writes indeed must write in his own blood. I, I thought, though fettered fast, I yet might move my hands to cast or to recast some labor, sift the sands. For knowledge, search the vast, some hidden hope to find, perhaps to help at last the cause of humankind. O oh, hope abandoned, not in me the worth or wit. God gave this lowly lot because I merit it. In humble ways I move myself to little things. The heated hands I prove. I watch the light that springs or fades in favored eyes, my only solace there not to be rich or wise, but to have done with fear. God sees the silent space where footsteps never trod, and in the lonely place the listener is God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Duration by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal In Duration Deep, deep in league with fate, fate fast in league with sorrow, and sorrow with my state I would that I could borrow. O deep, a depth from thee, O fate, thy fixed calm. O sorrow, what to me thou givest not thy balm that I might worthier show a scorn of your controls, and let misfortune know iron chains make iron souls. If chated we could but take contagion from the steel, and wisdom's mantle shake around us head to heel, and chill the eyes and rest no longer violent, the steel still more impressed would banish discontent. The strongest chains are burst when we have done with care, a joy lives in the worst, a gladness in despair. So when great clouds all night hold high debate of thunder, in awful tones that fright the huddled cities under, and roar their rage and move about the breadths of space, and sudden flashes prove the madness in their face, at length when break of day shows heavenly peace newborn, they mutteringly melt away before the might of morn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Wisdom's Council by Ronald Ross, read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal. Wisdom's Council 1. But Wisdom wearying said, I know a nobler way. Let fate with sorrow wed, and give the deep his day. But turn thine eyes and see, with some more love sincere, the prisoners that with thee are also dungeoned here. The pale flower in the chink, the spider at the grate, the bird that comes to drink his tolls from thy plate. Grief, sitting saddening still, with cold eyes inward cast, looks round the empty will and dreary chambers vast. Of thought she cannot sit, she loads her selfish tears, she looks once more without, and lo, worse grief appears. Her tears bechid and freeze, she watches the world's need, and deeper sorrow sees, and that that weeps indeed. There is no misery attired in mourning wear, worse misery may not see, and that that goeth bare. We have no heavy cross to someone's is not small, we weep no heavy loss, but someone weeps us all. And not the grief unseen, and not the aching mind, cries like the sorrow seen, and shivering in the wind. 2. Half stunned I look around, and see a land of death, dead bones that walk the ground, and dead bones underneath. A race of wretches caught between the palms of need, and rubbed to utter not the chaff of human seed. And all like stricken leaves, despondent multitudes, the wind of winter drives about the broken woods. The toiler tills the field, but at his bosom coiled, the blood leech makes him yield, the pence for which he toiled, and grows and drops off fat from these poor breathless ones, who know not this or that, but work themselves to bones. And this one fevered flags, and that one hopeless tries, or uncomplaining drags a giant leg and dies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Impatience by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal. Impatience. Vain drug, if I am sick, can others' sickness heal? or dead death make me quick i care not what they feel what wreck i let me go is not my bosom full the sorrow that i know makes others sorrow dull i will shut up the soul for only joy is just stones with the river roll and we even as we must why should i think of thee o wisdom and thy lies better laugh and foolish be than laugh not and be wise the wild birds hear thee not, of thee no torrents roar, the deep seas know no jot of all thy little lore. But man who cannot escape to follow thee and trust, thou takest by the nape and grindest in the dust. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. World Sorrows by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal World Sorrows 1. Lo, here our cursed caste hath made men things that creep. The beggars totter past, the baser sultans sleep. The limping lepers crawl, the tricking traders cheat. The lean ones cry and fall, the fat ones curse and beat. Never hath freedom's cry to stifling stillness cleaved. The hopeless millions die that yet had never lived. No noble god of earth men can but snatch and eat. Starvation murders worth, wealth makes the beast complete. What horror here is this, thy revelation truth? I shake at the abyss, what hunger, rage, and ruth. How hopeless, heaven we men, are not the gods we think, base pismires of the fen, that fight and bite and sink. 2. O myriad child and mother sitting among their graves, who thee and one another have made forever slaves. Great East, O aged mother, too old for fear and hope, fear that is pleasure's brother and sorrow's sister, hope. 
As erst in ages gone, so now thou art half dead, thy countenance turned to stone by an eternal dread. With lips that dare not move and awful lids apart, while yet faint pulses prove the life about thy heart, thou sittest at dreadful gaze into the dreadful vast, for thou canst well appraise the future by the past. Where thou beholdest death, confound and desolate and men like ants beneath the giant feet of fate three are these thy mighty deeds o past thy gains o time this rack of ruined creeds this scroll or two of rhyme a temple earthquake dashed a false record of things a picture lightning flashed of cruel eyes of kings a mangled race that bleeds in cruel customs claws besotted by their creeds and murdered by their laws right easily understood fate's lesson is too slow she takes a nation's blood to jot a word or two and for sufficient space to write a line of hers she wipes away a race and dashes down the verse and cries so much to each and man make mark or not, but what I choose to teach shall never be forgot. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Philosophies by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal Philosophies 1. If it be not to be, or being be in vain, that high philosophy shall ever counsel men, to mend this mindless state in which, as in the East, we drift on floods of fate, as helpless as the beast. Then here the issue is, look on this land and weep, a race as ruined as this, a misery as deep. 2. Seeing how pent we are within our human ways, that save in ceaseless war we cannot spend our days. In struggle each with each to get a breathing space, while heaven out of reach looks on with scornful face. I wonder for man's sake, cannot that mind of his, which made the engine make a better state than this? You're sitting in my place, there comes to me unsought, the beautiful sad face of this undying thought. And with it as in scorn the present state descried, of monsters heaven born and angels crucified where scourged to unnatural toil in palsied posture bent man creeping near the soil forgets the firmament three since since we first began to measure near and far and know that the thoughts of man his chiefest actions are a thousand cries in the sooth call us through time amain and every cry a truth, and every truth a gain. And yet the needful task to mend this state withal remains undone, we ask. What is the good of all? Do, cries the lofty seer, believe the prelate cries. Be, beauty's priest austere, persuades, the man replies. We have three beds at home, where eight of us must lie. Three blankets and one room, my children, wife, and I. All day our work we mind, but little money gain. At night the wintry wind winds through the window pane. So one doth read at ease with comfortable wine, devout philosophies that say for him divine. To be, to bear, to act, to know oneself be strong. Are all the heavens exact? He answers, I am strong. I fear not any fate. I do, I normally bear. A beggar at his gate cries in the bitter air. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lies by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Rav Agarwal. Lies. 1. Come, lie to us. Let us glow. Pour out the red wine. Speak. Pour out the sweet lies, so we shall be warm and sleek. Tell us in manner high the flattering things that soothe, 
but hush the outer cry and crush the inner truth. What matters all the din of truth, discordant cries? We quaff the joyous wine and lap ourselves in lies. The lordly anthem peals the while the people rot. The gilded church reveals the penury of their lot. No matter, let them starve, the gorgeous mass atones. These glorious arches serve to sepulchre their bones. Come, hymn the dying wretch with pains on the harps. Nard and vermilion fetch to paint and scent the corpse. 2. Into the hand of man, when by the gods first formed, they gave this talisman the dull stone reason armed, with which to brave the skies and made the earth his throne. But to his infant eyes a brighter treasure shone, the tinsel fancy flame, elusive and alas, he flung away the gem and took the glittering glass. 3. Vain, vain the visions, vain dreams that intoxicate, in the dark day when men come face to face with fate. Not out of knowledge grown the empty dogmas rise, but gilded bubbles blown from the foul froth of lies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Truth Service and Self Service by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. One. Alas, we know not what withholds us from the goal. Forever an inner rot consumes the seeing soul. Only the truth will serve. But he who follows it and finds has not the nerve to rule the world with it. The cunning keep the crown, and fate decrees that he who lives with truth alone shall win no victory. 2. Not to be granted great, not to be crowned in youth, his soul is passionate with anger for the truth. He feels the spirit drouth. He seeks the mad emprise to mock the mocking mouth and smite the lips of lies. Not his the happy guile to veil the flinching eye. Here where we sit and smile to hear each other lie but ours to live forsooth we keep a decent face and seize the skirts of truth and skip into a place with bearded wisdom thence our noble plan unfold for gathering good pretense indeed for gathering gold but he he cannot rise he slowly falls apart for all these human lies are needles in his heart he has the truth he thinks he shivers in his rags the laughing liar chinks his bursting money bags of lie begotten pelf and climbs the ladder of lies to fortune for himself and not for wisdom wise we crown the charlatan but show to him who shapes a priceless work for man the gratitude of apes so one with toil hath writ the work which is his life being poor he has no wit his reader is his wife they live in direst need no fortunate patron shows the work for men to read he dies and no one knows a jealous rival burns the work 
he will not save the buried poet turns and mutters in his grave three old ape old earth we smile thou ancient land of lies at all thy simple guile thy wisdom that's not wise scum of the populace the chatterer cheat and fool thou puttest in high place to scourge thee and to rule but him who thee hath given the good food of the land or water out of heaven thou bitest in the hand End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wraths by Ronald Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir. My soul is full of fire, wrath, and tempestuous dirge. I feel but one desire to find a sword and scourge since man by right of birth and nature's gift at least a god upon the earth remaineth but a beast ill ruling blind and halt and not by powers unknown or far off heaven's fault but chiefly by his own lies let us drink them up the sweet and bitter lies man takes the maddening cup and drinks and dreams and dies pure as revealing morn the angel truth stands there but we, O oh basely born, dare not to look at her. Not by eternal laws, condemned to eternal bruce, we suffer, but because we dare not face the truth. We wreathe and sanctify us to the inferior gods. For things which willify us, we lash ourselves with rods. We rip our veins and bleed before the gods of mire. For Moloch, without need, consume our babes in fire. But the greatest God of all, in eternal silence reigns. To his high audience hall, no human soul attains. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vision of Nescience by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Vision of nescience one a vision of the night i started in my bed a finger in the night was placed upon my head a ray of corruption blue as in an charnelled air on corpses comes i knew a death a woman there delirious knee to knee they drank of love like wine he skeleton thin and she most beautiful most divine he with his eyes half warmed out of their wan eclipse with lipless kisses stormed upon her living lips and like a vulture quaffed and raised his hideous head with joy aloft and laughed like vultures sipping blood the purple fold by fold fell from her and unseen the diadem of gold by which i knew her queen nor he unknown for at his feet the fiery brand and freezing fetters that endow him with command and on his head a crown of thirsty thorns aflame that flickered up and down in words that went and came like gods i am of god and said duty to me is duty unto god and said come on to me and i will give you rest then as i wondered lo i saw the woman waste to nothing and he as though blood nourished by her blood grow grosser in the gloom and leprous like the toad that battens in the tomb and both corrupted pined and lo a voice that wept and then a faint far wind of laughter and i slept two 
methought the heavens were crushed a myriad angels stood a wind of thunder rushed before the feet of god he spake accursed men i find your earth a hell show me what ye have done i bade ye order well they said well we have prayed lord and for heaven's hope a thousand temples made and his lightning licked them up end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Deeps by Ronald Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Deeps One Spirit, though without a name, Great the left hand of God, Who coolest the quick flame, And bendest back the rod, His awful right hand bears, Till the dull worm of earth No worse in darkness fares, than things of brighter birth nor in the lapse of hell all everlasting gloom help us to suffer well these dark days of our doom swift smiter of extremes who only let us thus live who feedest with bright dreams at midnight and dost give even to the poorest wretch of this distressful land a draught a rag a stretch of soil a loving hand ours too the guardian thou and if no other good thou wilt bestow and dow at least with fortitude two long long the barren years a deeper darkness grows the roadside tree appears no more the shadows close lost i sit down with night and weave night horrors here sad voices heard in flight and warnings in the air and convocations of thunder above tumultuous woods and white stars weeping under black threatening of clouds and a poem this recording is in the public domain loss by ronald ross read for LibriVox.org by nemo loss one death too hath come with sorrow sorrow enough to-day brings death with her to-morrow unwelcome guest to stay with us if i be sick i know not care not when the night is very thick my tract of toil is sand hated the daily toil hated the toil i loved daily the worthless soil sinks back as it is moved two i seize the hands of grief i would not thus be thrown but death came like a thief behind and seized my own i held debate with pain and half persuaded her then came the utterance plain of death the answerer criest thou so before thou sufferest he said wait yet a little more and thou shalt cry indeed sorrow so darkly veiled will take my hand and lead o oh, wisdom thou hast failed and sorrow she must lead and death with her he goes before and readeth plain the painful list of those dear ones whom he hath slain they fail they fall they sink torn from the treacherous sands the deeps of death they drink and reach out to maddened hands a mist across the deep of future and of past the rock wherein we creep the present we hold fast visible alone around the rolling wreaths of fog the unseen surges sound dead eyes are in the fog we have no airy scope we are not things that fly we are but things that grope from hand to hand and die not many friends o oh god ours and so far so dear 
so far that lest manhood losing can nobly bear the loss as having more must love what bitter loss to us so distant for no dying word to us no hand in ours not even to see the well-known spot the room the chair is given to visit the sacred plot three o oh, lily that to the lips pulsed at the name of death and with rest and eclipse in yieldest a sickly breath and rose that sheddest thy leaves and tremblest as they fall know ye what power bereaves and takes the sum of all now slowly perishing down to the leafless core ye die no lovely thing a heart and nothing more four if we could think that death as surely as we dream to us who dwell beneath the summit of supreme perspective love and peace will open heavenly sweets it would be wise to cease if ceasing thus completes unless the further faith malfiant power pursue in death those who in death have hoped to struggle through five the tropic night is hushed with hateful noises hark the fluttering night moth crushed by reptiles in the dark about the bed the sound of tiny shrieks of pain of midnight murders round of creatures serpents slain a moan of thunder fills the stagnant air and soon a black cloud from the hills devours the helpless moon those faces stamped in air when all the hateful night we toss and cannot bear the heated bed and night is full of silent sounds that walk about the bed the whining night fly wounds the ear the air is dead the darkness madness heat a hell appearing days are silent at the feet stand gazing going gaze and a poem this recording is in the public domain.